Agyananjana Shalakaya Jaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're continuing with our study of the Bhagavad Gita and this evening we're going to go through chapter 10, the opulences of the Absolute. Yes, go ahead Archana. All right, so first of all, chapter 10 describes the Lord's opulences on which a devotee can fix his mind and how to remember him when we see opulent, powerful and beautiful things in this world. <laughs> Those of you who were with us at the last class when we studied chapter 9, the final verse of chapter 9 was the most confidential knowledge and Lord Krishna began by saying, engage your mind in thinking of me. So we have to know how to, what to think about the Lord. We have to be able to remember Him. So how to remember him, how to think of him. Therefore Krishna is speaking this chapter today, chapter number 10. Go ahead. Verse number 1. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Listen again, O mighty armed Arjuna, because you are my dear friend. For your benefit, I shall speak to you further, giving knowledge that is better than what I have already explained. So in this chapter, Lord Krishna is going to give us knowledge better than what we've already received. Actually, the knowledge is absolute. It's all good. But Krishna is encouraging us that we need to hear more. And the more we hear, the more we get purified. As Lord Krishna said, this is for our benefit that he is speaking this knowledge. Go ahead. Text number two. 
Neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages know my origin or opulences, for in every respect I am the source of the demigods and sages. ทางเทวดาและนักปราชญ์ผู้ยิ่งใหญ่จำนวนมากไม่รู้แหล่งกำเนิดหรือความมั่งคงมั่งคั่งของข้าแต่ข้าคือแหล่งกำเนิดของเราเทวดาและนักปราชญ์ด้วยประการทั้งปวง When we were small children, we would wonder. We would go to our parents. We would ask, "Where did I come from?" We cannot understand where we came from. We cannot understand where did where did my mother come from. So how can we ever understand Krishna's origin? When we were young, right? We would have to ask ourselves, "Where did we come from? Where did our mother come from? Where did our father come from?" ใช่ไหมเพราะฉะนั้นความสงสัยแบบนี้เนี่ยเราเคยมีมาอยู่แล้วตั้งแต่เด็กเพราะฉะนั้นตรงนี้เนี่ยพระองค์ก็ทรงเหมือนกับว่าเรากำลังได้ดูในส่วนที่ว่าคริสตานี่มาจากไหน So it often troubles people. They think that where did Krishna come from? But we have to understand Krishna is the origin of everything. He's the original source of everything. Everything comes from him. It's not that he comes from something; that he is the original source of everything. แล้วบุคคลก็อาจจะมีคำถามขึ้นได้ว่าเออแล้วอย่างนี้เนี่ยคริสนามาจากไหนใช่ไหมคำตอบก็คือคริสนาไม่ได้มาจากไหนเลยคริสนาคือมีพระองค์ทรงมีอยู่แล้วนะคะแล้วทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างคือมาจากพระองค์พระองค์ทรงเป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของทุกสิ่งทุกอย่าง So this this is an important point to understand. Because we we sometimes have a material understanding, and we think because we have a mother and father, we think well, of course Krishna also he takes a mother and father, but that's just for his pastimes. It's for a lila, but out actually Krishna is the source of everything. <laughs> ก็บอกว่าอ๋อพระองค์ก็ทรงมีบิดามารดาแต่นั้นเนี่ยเป็นลีลาของพระองค์เฉยๆซึ่งแต่ความจริงแล้วพระองค์ทรงเป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของสิ่งทุกอย่าง As Krishna says here I am the source of the demigods and sages พระองค์เขาบอกพระองค์เนี่ยเป็นแหล่งกำเนิดของเราเทวดาและก็นักปราชญ์ Go ahead This text number seven One who is factually convinced of this opulence and mystic power of mine engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this, there is no doubt. ในสโลที่เจ็ดนะคะบอกว่าผู้ที่มั่นใจอย่างแท้จริงในความมั่งคั่งและพลังพระองค์ในการดำเนินชีวิตของข้านี้จะปฏิบัติการยึดต้นเสียสละรับใช้ด้วยความบริสุทธิ์ใจโดยไม่มีข้อสงสัย So you could uh, this is like the seed for the uh, Lord Krishna speaking all the different opulences which are going to come uh, in the second half of the verse of this chapter rather in the second half of this chapter Lord Krishna will describe many of his different opulences and his mystic powers. And his purpose in telling us all these things is to convince us to take up devotional service. So what happens if we accept the knowledge of Lord Krishna's opulences? What happens is we will become we we will feel that that is proper to take up service and to become a devotee of Krishna. Now, so this is if we have this So, who can be a devotee of Krishna? 
we want to understand, is there any special qualification to be a devotee? Is it only for very rich people or is it only for very poor people? But we will see from this pastime that Lord Krishna's devotees are from all different levels of society. Some are very ri rich and powerful and they serve as kings and others are very poor and simple. And Lord Krishna, 5,000 years ago when Lord Krishna was on this planet, he would go to visit these people. So we're hearing that there were there were uh, there was one king called Bahulasva, and Lord Krishna went to visit the king, and he went. Lord Krishna went with all the great sages like Narada and Vyasadeva and Parasuram, Asita, Sukadev, Brihaspati. They all accompanied Lord Krishna to go and visit the king, King Bahulasva. And the king gave a wonderful reception, very opulent, and they had very nice food, and they were given very nice seats. You can see in the picture, Krishna was put on a nice big chair, and the king came and washed the feet of Lord Krishna. But Krishna didn't just go to see the king. He also went to see this poor brahmana named Shrutadev. And Shrutadev didn't have a palace. He had a very simple home. So when Krishna came there, he simply put a mat on the floor and he didn't have a lot of opulent foodstuffs to give Krishna. He just offered some simple fruits, whatever was available from his home. But Krishna was happy because he knew this Brahmana is also Krishna's devotee. So in this pastime, Lord Krishna is showing us how it, the important qualification to attract Krishna is devotion. Lord Krishna is not attracted by great learning. He's not attracted by great birth, big birth, and important birth. He's not attracted by great austerities. He's simply attracted by the pure heart of his devotees. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can I have a second? Because I need to change the translator uh, from Sumadri Maji to someone. So I will stop sharing the screen for for Okay. For okay. Who's going to translate? Sumadri is not translating. Yeah, the Ruksana Madaji is here. So I will just put her as Okay. As
So the next verse is the first of the chapter shloki, which are the four verses which summarize the Bhagavad Gita. And the first verse, number eight, is describing how Krishna is the source of all the opulences. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their heart. So everything comes from Krishna, the material and the spiritual worlds, they all come from Krishna. So when we actually understand this properly, then it will be natural for us to surrender to Krishna and take up devotional service. So this first verse of the chapter Shloki, number eight, is describing the Sambandha the relationship between Krishna and his energies. Okay, go ahead. So we see how, how Lord Krishna actually manifests the material world. And it begins from Karano Dakashai Vishnu, who is sometimes called simply Maha Vishnu. Karano Dakashai means he's laying on the Karana Ocean. The Karana Ocean is the causal ocean. Uh, yes, it's the ocean from which all the universes, they come out from the body of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu is laying there on the Kosho ocean and from his body, from the pores of his body, the different universes are coming out. So you can just imagine how big his body must be. If so many universes can come out from the pores, the pores of his body, he must have such a huge body. So, 
So, Lord Vishnu is one of the expansions of Lord Krishna. And Lord Vishnu, he's doing, you can see he's doing the service to help in the creation of the material world. His one breath, he will breathe out and all the universes will come out. And then when he breathes in, all the universes will come back into his body. So the whole duration of the, the creation of the material world is just simply one breath of Mahavishnu. พอจะเวลาท่านหายใจออกนะครับจักรวาลทั้งหมดนี้น่ะก็จะออกมาแล้วก็เกิดมีการอะไรมากมายแค่ท่านหายใจออกแล้วเวลาท่านหายใจเข
And the third Vishnu is called Shirodakashayi Vishnu. And he has a place high up in the universe, there's a planet at the top of the universe which is called Sweta Dweep. And Sweta Dweep is in the milk ocean, surrounded by the milk ocean. So Shiro Dakishai Vishnu, he expands himself in the, to the heart of all the living entities. The super soul is his expansion and he's in the heart of all the living entities. And when the different avatars of Lord Krishna come into this world, they will come from Shirodakshayi Vishnu. The avatars, the different avatars, when they come in the world, they will appear through the body of Shirodakshayi Vishnu. Here in this picture on the left, you can see Lord Brahma and other demigods, they've all come to pray to Lord Vishnu. And they cannot actually see Lord Vishnu, they can only meditate on him and they're at the shore of the milk ocean. And within the milk ocean there is the island of Sweta Dweep where the Lord resides. So Chiro Dakashai Vishnu is not only in the heart of all living entities, he's even within every atom. So we see there are three Vishnus. There is the Maha Vishnu, then the Garbodak Vishnu, and then the Shirodak Vishnu. These, these three Vishnus are called the Purusha avatars and they're involved in creating the material world. And they're all expansions of Lord Krishna. Go ahead. So, the, the, pre, the first verse of the Chatur Sloka described the relationship. The second verse here is describing the process of devotional service. Lord Krishna said, the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, their lives are fully devoted to my service and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me.
และพวกเขาได้รับความพึงพอใจและปลื้มปิติสุขอย่างยิ่ง The devotees, when we come together, we get happiness from discussing topics of Krishna with each other. And uh, naturally, within our mind, we're always thinking of Krishna, and we're very much devoted to Krishna's service. We want to be active in the service of Krishna. But the, we get, the devotee will get the greatest satisfaction by discussing, hearing, talking about Krishna with other devotees. Just like we're doing this Bhagavad Gita regularly, we're going through the Bhagavad Gita chapter by chapter. It gives us a lot of pleasure. We feel enlightened hearing about Krishna. Go ahead. This is the process of devotional service. We want you to understand how devotional service works. It begins like a seed. Just like in the picture, we put a seed into the ground. And then we regularly have to water the seed, and gradually the seed sprouts and it begins to grow. So in the same way, we get the seed of devotion. Some, the spiritual teacher or the representative of the spiritual teacher, some devotee, they will put the seed of devotion into our heart by giving us a little knowledge about Krishna. <laughs> Sometimes we go to the temple and we attend the program or somebody gives us a book about Krishna and we read the book and we get inspired. So when the seed is planted, that's the beginning. But when you put seeds in the ground, you have to water them regularly in order for the seed to grow. So how does the seed grow? The seed has to be watered, there has to be hearing and chanting, and then the seed will grow nicely. Our seed of devotion needs hearing and chanting. Now, of course, when you're watering, the seed will grow, but sometimes also weeds will also grow, and you have to be able to distinguish what is the weed and what is the real plant. And we have to get rid of the weeds because the weeds will choke the growth of the plant. 
พวกที่ส่วนที่เป็นวัชพืชเนี่ยออกเพราะมันจะอาจจะทำร้ายต้นไม้ของเรา So the weeds come in the form of material desires and material attachments. Go ahead. Okay. So can number ten is describing. The result of the process of devotional service. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So Lord Krishna is describing that when we devote ourselves to Krishna and we do service for Krishna with love, the result is Krishna will help us. He'll give us the understanding how we can go to Him. Sometimes Krishna will give the understanding through the spiritual teacher. Sometimes Krishna will give the understanding through the heart. But this this is the relationship between Krishna and his devotees. Because the devotees love Krishna, Krishna loves the devotees. And Krishna wants to bring the devotees to be with him. Go ahead. To show them special mercy, I dwelling in their heart, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Lord Krishna is describing how he acts on the heart of the de the devotee. He takes away all the dirt, any contamination which may be there. Lord Krishna will remove it so that we can awaken our pure love for him. Ignorance is like darkness, and knowledge is like light. So we say Krishna is like the sun, and wherever there's the sun, there's no darkness. And wherever there is Krishna, there will be no Maya. There will be no ignorance. So this is the this is called the this is the fourth of the Chatur Sloki. There are four Chatur means four. Four slokas, which are the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. And they're describing, first of all, the relationship, and then the process, and then the result of the process, the goal. Uh, 
ของการปฏิบัติการในเสียชาติแล้วก็สรุปสุดท้ายก็ after hearing this this statement after hearing this statements from Lord Krishna Arjuna is very please go back what's happening After hearing these statements from Lord Krishna, Arjuna is very inspired, and he can understand. He's appreciating Krishna's position as the supreme personality of Godhead. And Arjuna is offering this glorification of Krishna. Uh, telling Krishna that you are the supreme absolute truth, you are the original person, you are the greatest, and he said all the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala, Vyas confirm this truth about you, and now you yourself are declaring it to me. พระองค์ทรงเป็นบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดเห็นพระเจ้าเป็นพระตำหนักสูงสุดเป็นผู้บริสุทธิ์ที่สุดเป็นศาสนาพระองค์ทรงเป็น
And then he said of the Adityas, I am Vishnu. Lord Vishnu appeared in the form of Bhamana Dev as the son of Aditi. Uh, and among the Rudras, I am Shiva, Lord Shiva. Of generals, I am Kartikeya. Kartikeya is one of the sons of Lord Shiva. People in Malaysia, the Hindu people in Malaysia, they are very much devoted to Kartikeya and they have a big festival there every year in the month of January. And then among the Vasus, Krishna says, I am Agni. Among the Daichas, I am Prahlad. The Daichas are the demons of Prahlad. Krishna said, I am Prahlad, the devotee Prahlad. And the, the dispensers of law, I am Yama, Yama, the god of death or Yamaraj. Of, of creators, I am Brahma. And causes of procreation, I am Kandarpa. So we can think of Krishna in all of these different forms, that these are all different forms of Krishna. Link, go ahead. So Krishna is not only in the Devatas, nature is also another form of Krishna. And so Lord Krishna explains that oh, um, I am the light of the sun and the moon. And of mountains, I am Mount Meru. Of immovable things, I am the Himalayas. Of bodies of, of, bodies of water, I am the ocean. Of trees, I am the banyan. Of rivers, I am the Ganga. Of months, I am Magashirsha. And of seasons, I am spring. So the banyan tree is a very sacred tree and the Lord Shiva likes, he resides under a banyan tree. Often great devotees, they may live under the banyan tree. And Ganga is the most famous of all rivers, a very holy river which comes all the way down from the Himalayas, right? Flows all the way through India and flows to the sea. Very big river and flows very fast. And 
สู่ลายมาเรื่อยๆโอเคก็ฮะนั่นคริชนาสเดสคริปปิ้งเกี่ยวกับทุกประเทศเขาอยู่ที่ไหนเขาอยเราประชาชนเราทรงอธิบายเกี่ยวกับพวกนักปราบด้วยนะคะว่าท่านเนี่ยทรงปรากฏในมูนักปราบด้วย So he says, first of all, of all sages, I am Vyas. Vyas was the compiler of the Vedas, and he wrote also Mahabharata. He wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. Of a great sage, is Krishna said, "I'm Brigo. Brigo was he was he's very old, and he was sent when they wanted to understand who was supreme between Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and Brigo Muni was sent to go and find out." ท่านเนี่ยได้รับหน้าที่ก็คือตอนที่โลกเนี่ยคนในโลกเกิดความสงสัยว่าใครใหญ่สุดระหว่างพระพระศิวะพระพรหมแล้วก็พระวิษณุให้ก็ให้ฤาษีมีรูเนี่ยไปค้นหา And among the demigods, sages among the demigods, we have Narada. He's Deva Rishi. He's a sage among the demigods. We say Deva Rishi, and Narada. That's Narada Muni. He's the son of Brahma. So he is a, like a demigod, but at the same time he is a sage. And then, a priest, a priest, Brihaspati, Brihaspati. As a priest of the devas, and then Lord Kapila, perfected beings. Lord Kapila, who came as the son of Devahuti, and he taught the Sankhya philosophy. And of great thinkers, Lord Krishna says he is Sukracharya. Sukracharya is the guru of the demons. Yes, he's a guru of the demons. He's a guru of Bali Maharaj. They're all from the demons. So Sukracharya was a guru. Was Sukracharya when Bali Maharaj was killed? Sukracharya brought him back to life. So Bali Maharaj is very much indebted to his guru Sukracharya. Go ahead. So even animals are there, and the Lord is also there among the animals. But they're very special animals. Just like among horses, there's the horse Uchishrava, who came from the when the when the demigods and the demons churned the milk ocean, they produced different things. And one of the things they produced was a horse, Uchishrava, and it, then they also produced an elephant, Airavrata, and that elephant became the carrier of Bali Maharaj. แล้วก็ในบรรดาสัตว์ด้วยนะคะกิชาก็บอกว่าพระองค์ทรงเป็นไขบ้า
ในบรรดาม้าเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงเป็นม้าที่ชื่อว่าอุกรัสซาร่าซาร่านะเป็นม้าที่เกิดจากการการเจิญนะคะในภูเขาเมรุเนี่ยคือฟังเทวดากับฟังมาเนี่ยที่เขาจะที่เขาจะไอ้นี่กันนะคะอามังอามังคาวส์ Lord Krishna is the Surabi Surabi cow the mother of all cows Surabi cows are in the spiritual world แล้วก็ในในบรรดาช้างก็อารวัตนะคะที่ที่เป็นบาลีมาราชัยแล้วก็ในบรรดาวัวเนี่ยท่านเป็นสุรบีนะคะที่วัวที่ชื่อสุรบีอยู่ตรงที่ among serpents Lord Krishna says he is Vasuki The celestial serpent Vasuki was used to churn the milk ocean by the demigods and the demons. But there are some serpents which have many hoods. So the many hooded nagas, Lord Krishna says, he is Ananta. แล้วก็ในบรรดาแมนิคูสเนี่ยแปลว่าอะไรในบรรดานี้นะคริสนาก็เป็นอนันต์อนันต์ yeah, อนันต์อนันต์ just like อนันต์เชชช์ one of the expansions of Lord Balaram for the service of Krishna นี่ก็พระองค์ก็ทรงเป็นอนันต์นะเหมือนกับอนันต์เชชที่เป็นที่เป็นบาลาเป็นตัวแทนของบาลาในการค้ำจุนลูก And the, among fish Krishna is the shark among beasts he is the lion and among birds he is Garuda และในบรรดาปลาเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงเป็นปลาฉลาดนะแล้วก็ในบรรดาอักลาเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงเป็นสิงโตแล้วก็ในบรรดานกเนี่ยพระองค์ทรงเป็น Garuda Yeah, the shark. The shark is the most powerful of all beasts in the ocean. All every all the other fish will move fast. They move run, run away when the shark comes. And the same way on the land, the lion is the king of the jungle. Even the big elephants, they cannot defeat the lion. Hmm. Pachalam, ha, ก็ถือว่าเป็นปลาที่มีอำนาจมากในท้องทะเลในขณะที่ทุกคนจะเกรงกลัวแล้วก็สิงโตนะก็เหมือนกับเป็นเหมือนกับเป็นราชาในป่าที่แม้แต่ช้างเนี่ยตัวใหญ่ๆก็ยังจะกลัวเป็นนักล่าผู้ยิ่งใหญ่นะสิงโต And there are many different varieties of birds, millions of different kinds of birds, but the greatest of all bird is Garuda, who is the carrier of Lord Vishnu. แล้วก็ในบรรดานกเนี่ยก็มีนกหลายชนิดนะคะแต่ว่าในบรรดานกที่ดีที่สุดก็คือกรุดาหรือว่าเปรียครุฑนั่นเองครับคือเป็นยานพาหนะของอวิสนุเวลาท่านจะไปไหนก็จะใช่ Go ahead philosophical truths Krishna said of the senses I am the mind of I am the super soul in the heart of all living entities And of poetry, I am the Gayatri. Of letters, A. Of the compound words, the dual compound. Science, I am the spiritual science of the self. Logicians, I am conclusive truth. And of Sama Veda hymns, I am the Brihad Sama. <laughs> ที่อยู่ในใจนะค่าคือองค์อภิวิญญาในบรรดาบทมนต์ค่าคือบทมนต์กายตรีและในบรรดาตัวเลขค่าเป็นตัวเอในบรรดาวิทยาศาสตร์เนี่ยค่าเป็นวิทยาศาสตร์ทิพย์ในการรู้แจ้งแห่งตุลแล้วก็ในในลอจิกต่างๆเนี่ยค่าเป็นบทสรุปที่แท้จริงสุดสุด yes. Go ahead Vedic mantras 
Krishna says, among, I am the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras, and I am the chanting of the holy names of sacrifices. I am the chanting of the holy name, and of the Vedas, I am Samaveda. <laughs> So people sometimes say, where in the Bhagavad Gita does it say we're supposed to chant? Where does it say we're supposed to chant the holy name? Well, it says it right here in chapter 10, text number 25. Krishna says, I am the chanting of the holy name. So, at the end of the chapter, Lord Krishna says, What need is there, Arjuna, for all of this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire universe. The last verse. So how, what is that single fragment of Krishna? That is the super soul which pervades and supports everything. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take questions. Okay, now I'll Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, Shaya. Yes, Shaya. Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dandava Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances or glory to Sira Prabhupada. Uh, come time, Ajana. Uh, Pimi from Sosaiwa, Kahaba, Bakawana, you and Sati Juna, was I from seeing me she with Yan and Donia. Tell my Yami Ponti and Hamba, you were Yaha. You may come so sight on Yahaya, I could Mahara, Tiba, and Farmer. What am I, Bakawan, you native that I might call Lomet Hambi and Yaha? Okay. 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 He does not force people to do what he wants. He gives everyone free freedom to act. And he is waiting for them. When they suffer more and more and more, then at one point, at some point, then they'll get so tired of the they'll wonder why am I suffering, and then from the heart, Krishna will guide them. But. Krishna does not force us that we have to love him. He gives us freedom. Krishna 
Just like if the man forces you to love him, you, it's not real love. So Krishna wants real love. He does not force us to love him. He gives us the opportunity to learn for ourselves what is right, what is wrong. Just like if the child puts their hand in the fire, they will get burned. So they'll be very careful not to put their hand in the fire again. So we learn by experience. And Krishna is in the heart. He is the witness to remind us of all of our desires. What did we desire? And he carries our desires from one life to the next life. So the body we have now, this is the result of our previous desires. So Krishna is there. He's the witness. As the super soul, he's the witness to our activities. And super soul is also the permitter that he allows us to do things. He gives us, okay, you want to do it? Okay, you do it. Just like sometimes a father may say, don't smoke, don't smoke, not good for you, don't smoke, you shouldn't do it. But then when you grow up, you think, I'm going to smoke. So then you're grown up, the father can't stop you from smoking. So same way, Krishna is there in the heart. He's telling us, don't do this, don't do the sinful things. But we don't listen. We think, oh no, it's okay, I want, I want. So then he said, all right, then go ahead, go and suffer. And then when we suffer, then we think, I should have listened to Krishna. He was telling me not to do this, but I didn't listen. Understand, Shaya? Yes, I understand, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for your explain, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Guruvaraj, got four more questions. Okay. Nongkita Shaleha. Hare Krishna Dandavat Pranam Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, happy Ajana, come to my home, Naha, Kaku, Ajitai Kapanyanya, Samhan Ruakyo, Hong Kanyangayaha. Ajitai Kapanya. 
โอเคค่ะใช่ค่ะโอเคคุณมาชา question is mind and intelligent how is it connected yes how is it uh huh so my mind is desire we have the desires in the mind And the intelligence is higher than the mind, higher than the mind, because the intelligence will guide our desires. Just like the mind may say, the mind may think, "Oh, I need money. I think I should rob the bank." There's a lot of money in the bank. I'll rob the bank, but the intelligence will say, "Oh no, no, it's not a good idea. You'll get caught. You'll get killed. You may get put in jail for the whole, whole life. Don't do it." ตัวอย่างเช่นสมมติเราแบบว่าโอ้ยอยากมีตังสักทีรู้สึกอยากรวยแล้วแต่ในนี้จิตใจก็จะบอกว่าไปป้นแบงไปป้นแบงดีกว่าเราบอกอู้จะไปป้นแบงค์ะแต่ในนี้ปัญญาของเราจะบอกว่าเฮ้ยถ้าเกิดเราอยู่ไปป้นแบงค์เนี่ยจะอยู่จะโดนจับแล้วก็ทั้งชีวิตเนี่ยจะต้องอยู่ในคุกอย่างเดียวเลยนะ So the intelligence guides the mind about what is the good desire, what is the right, what is the wrong desire, but sometimes people are not very intelligent. เพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยจิตปัญญาเนี่ยก็จะคอยนำทางจิตใจว่าอันไหนเธอควรทำอันไหนไม่ควรทำอะไรแต่ว่าโดยส่วนใหญ่แล้วเนี่ยผู้คนเนี่ยจะไม่ค่อยมีปัญญามาก Just like some people they do a lot of we know people do many foolish things they do many bad things and they suffer did Krishna not help them Yes Krishna was telling them but they were not listening And they didn't have the intelligence to guide them on to guide their own self. They didn't listen to the Krishna. They didn't listen to intelligence. แต่บางครั้งเนี่ยเราก็จะเห็นคนแบบทำเรื่องราวอะไรที่มันบ้าๆหรือว่าโง่มากเลยใช่ไหมครับแล้วทำไมเขาถึงทำอย่างนี้ก็ความจริงก็เป็นเพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยไม่มีปัญญานั่นเองความจริงมีกริชนาเนี่ยคอยที่อยู่ในใจเขาเนี่ยพยายามนำทางเขาแล้วแต่เขาไม่ฟังและเขาไม่มีปัญญามากพอ So we give the example, you know, the the chariot, the senses are like the horses, the mind are like the reins on the horse, and intelligence is like the driver. The driver is holding the reins, and the the mind is like the reins on the horse. เราเราก็จะให้ตัวอย่างนะคะเหมือนกับราชรถนะคะทีม้าเนี่ยที่จะมีม้าหลายตัวใช่ไหมม้าเนี่ยจะเปรียบเสมือนกับประสาทสัมผัสแล้วก็เชือกในการควบคุมม้าเนี่ยก็คือจิตใจนั่นเองแล้วก็ผู้ที่เป็นคนขับนะขับราชรถเนี่ยก็คือปัญญา so can you understand no พอเข้าใจไหมคะน้องกิตตาเข้าใจแล้วค่ะ okay ปริศนาค่ะ Yes. Okay. Deva Huti has a question. Yes. Deva Huti. Hare Krishna, Deva Huti. Hare Krishna, Deva Huti. Um, Madhuji, Madhuji, you are Agi Ji, Bhagwan, you are not sure to Bhagwan why me. You are not sure to Bhagwan why me. Bhagwan is not sure to Bhagwan why me. सब इन सब पे मेरा ऐश्वर्य है वो बन बात है जो ऐश्वर्य भी मेरा बन बात है मतलब चेनी ने ते यो जो ये भगवान ले आपने अलग 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 भी पर देखा है वो इस तो सूर्य चंद्रमा ने मोहिनी मोहिनी ने सब पे चेनी तो ये ते यो भगवान को ऐश्वर्य जान मान ले सब लाइन अन्य अजीब जो फैशन चमत्ती जो कपिल � Uh, Guru Maharaj, the question is uh, regarding the uh, where you have explained uh, God, like Krishna said, he is the uh, he, he is this bridge, fish, he is this mountain, he is this uh, 
trees and all. So this is his opulence that he's trying to explain to us. Yes. It's the first. Yeah, these are his, what we call vibhutis. This is his vibhutis. So, it's all Krishna's energies, of course, everything is Krishna's energy, but there are particular special features among everything, just like there are many mountains, but Mount Meru, is the biggest mountain. It's the biggest, it's so huge. And so it's a very special mountain, you see. And so this is manifestation of Krishna's opulence in the form of a mountain. <laughs> And then he said, a beast, I am the lion. There are many beasts. There are many different beasts in the jungle. But the lion is the most powerful of all the beasts. And then he said of sacrifices, I am the chanting of the holy name. So there are many different kinds of sacrifices, different yagyas we can do. But the most powerful and the most important of all the sacrifices is the chanting of the Holy Name. So these are, if you look through each and every one of these opulences, you will see Krishna is showing how he is present in all of these different things. And they represent Krishna, just like the taste of water. The water has a very unique taste. So that taste, that is Krishna. So if you analyze each and every one of these vibhutis, you see how Krishna is so powerful. This, this is his special vibhuti in all of these different aspects, features, personalities. Krishna's in everything, everyone. And in these particular things, they're displaying the maximum quality of Krishna. You know, there's so many sages, but Vyasa is a very special sage greater than all the other sages. So he's displaying more than the other sages. He's displaying Krishna. Now all the sages, they're all part of Krishna, but Vyas is, he's got the special power of Krishna to write the Vedas. So he's the greatest of the sages. Krishna 
พราะว่าท่านเนี่ยเขียนพระเวทหลายเล่มโอเคเยสโอเคกุลมาชัยเธอ another question is uh, also uh, for Lord Kapil Kapila he is teach about Sankhya Yoga yes Yes, it's described in the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. You can read about Lord Kapila teaching his mother. His mother was Devahuti, right? And Devahuti, she had been married to Kardama Muni, and Kardama Muni had taken sannyas and gone away and left her with her son. So Lord Kapila instructed his mother in the Sankhya philosophy. คำถามต่อไปของวันนี้นะคะถามว่าพระองค์เจ้ากปิลาเนี่ยทรงสอนสังกโยคะใช่หรือไม่นะคะบุรมาลาบอกว่าใช่คุณแม่นะคะชื่อเดวะคุตีแล้วก็ท่านก็จะนางก็จะแต่งงานอ่าแต่งงานแล้วก็สามีเนี่ยก็จะออกป่าไปแล้วก็จะแต่ว่านางจะมีลูกชายนะคะลูกชายเนี่ยก็จะสอนปรัชญาสังกานี้ให้กับคุณแม่ So Lord Kapila, you know, his mother was missing her husband because she'd gone away. He'd gone away, taken sannyas. He told her before the marriage. He said, "After we have a child, I will go. I have to renounce." So they had a child, and so he left her, and so she was feeling pain a little. But she had a son, and she knew her son was the incarnation of God. So she she approached her son, and her son told her. That you have to become attached to a devotee. Don't just be attached to your husband, but be attached to a devotee. t h i n นะคะนางเนี่ยพอสามีกรรมมุนีเขาจากไปเนี่ยนางก็จะรู้สึกความพังเพินแล้วก็คิดถึงสามีมากสามีจะเป็นสัญญาสีจะออกบวชไปก็คือบอกนางไว้แล้วตั้งแต่แต่งงานว่าถ้าเกิดว่าฉันถ้าเกิดว่าเรามีลูกแล้วเนี่ยฉันก็จะออกออกป่าไปเพราะลูกจะดูแลเธอแทนอะไรอย่างนี้นางก็บอกโอเคแล้วพอมีลูกแล้วแต่พอสามีไปจริงๆนางก็รู้สึกคิดถึงรู้สึกค้างเหินเสร็จทีนี้เนี่ยนางก็ทราบดีว่าลูกของตนเนี่ยเป็นอวตารของพระผู้เป็นเจ้าก็เลยถามถึงความรู้นี้นะแล้วก็ท่านกปิลาก็จะให้ความรู้บอกว่าเธอไม่ควรที่จะยึดติดกับสามีสามีแต่ว่าควรที่จะยึดติดกับสาวก And he told her, attachment for the material is the cause of the greatest bondage, but the same attachment applied to the spiritual can give you liberation. The Han ก็จะสอนบอกว่าความยึดติดที่มีต่อสิ่งที่เป็นวัตถุเนี่ยจะทำให้เราเนี่ยยิ่งถูกพันธนาการในโลกนี้มากยิ่งขึ้นแต่ว่าความยึดติดอันเดียวกันถ้าเกิดว่าเราใช้ไปในวิธีทิพย์เนี่ย Mm -hmm. So you have to follow the path of Devahuti. Your Devahuti Dasi. Okay. Okay. Next question. Yes. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hi. Hi, Dee. Yes. Who's there? Prabhu is there. The Thai yes. Prabhu. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Kong Sawat, Prabhu Ji, share it, ha. Hari Krishna, Guru Maharaj, ha. Yeah, ha. His question is: If he wants to have opulence in spiritual knowledge, what he should do? Well, he should study the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, you study the Bhagavad Gita carefully, and get to get familiar with all the chapters and know the message clearly. 
แล้วก็ศึกษาภาวะที่ใดอย่างดีจนจนรู้แต่ละบทแล้วก็รู้ถึงข้อข้อความที่ภาวะที่ใดพยายามจะสื่อ and then you have to practice what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita you have to surrender to Krishna แล้วก็นำสิ่งที่กิชนาสอนนะภาวะที่ใดเนี่ยออกมาใช้ออกมาปฏิบัติด้วยแล้วก็พยายามสิทธิ์สิโลลาต่อมู We have to take shelter of a spiritual teacher and follow his instructions. Opulence. Is to know, to know you're the servant, and Krishna is the master. So the servant will engage in service according to the instructions of the master. So you have to follow Krishna's instructions. แล้วหน้าที่ของผู้รับใช้เนี่ยก็คือการปฏิบัติการรับใช้ต่อเจ้านายนั่นเองนะคะแล้วก็จะการรับใช้อะไรที่คริสนาทรงให้เราเราก็ปฏิบัติตามนะคริสนาทรงให้เราปฏิบัติตามนะคริสนาทรงให้เราเนี่ยสวดภาวนาพระนามสิทธิ์คริสนาทรงให้เราปฏิบัติตามนะคริสนาทรงให้เราปฏิบัติตามนะคริสนาทรงให้เราปฏิบัติตามนะคริสนาทรงให้เราปฏิบัติตามนะคริสนาคริสนาบอกว่าเราต้องพูดคุยเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวของพระเจ้ากับบรรดาสาวกของเราเพราะฉะนั้นเราเนี่ยอาจจะไม่ใช่พูดเกี่ยวกับคริสนาพูดถึงคริสนาอย่างเดียวแต่ว่าเราเนี่ยจะปฏิบัติการรับใช้คริสนาจริงๆแบบลงมือปฏิบัติตามใจ We offer our food to Krishna. We chant, we chant and dance the glory. This is all Krishna's instructions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, นะคะต่อไปโอเคต่อไปเอ่อ I don't know who okay ยูกิตามาตุจี Yes, thank you, Madhuji. Hi, Krishna Birthday. Please accept some humble obeisances. All cards to you, Birthday and Shri Lakshmi. Gurudev, I want to ask. Uh, in text 25, the Lord says uh, uh, that I am chanting of the holy name. So when people, Gurudev, the elders, especially uh, our elders, like in the family, they're chanting. Like I said last time, Om. That's the transcendental sound of the Lord, right? Because they're not familiar with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. They're not brought up with that one. So is that all right, also, Gurudev? Chanting of the holy name, right? So chanting Om would be okay. Yes, if they have the mode of giving service to Krishna. Hmm. They're thinking of Lord Shiva, like I said. <laughs> That's a problem. Um. Okay. I mean, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he is the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. Mm. So Om represents Krishna. It doesn't represent Shiva. Mm. So they haven't got it right. Yeah. So it's still a problem, right? Yes. Ah, good and bad. <laughs> Don't know how to even say that to them, were they? Because you know. Doesn't sound positive in any way. Anyway, if they understand, if they're worth.